Hey friends, so my long-awaited Arteria Pigments online course finally launches today. So to celebrate, we're gonna do a pigment sound design deep dive. If you're a pigments user, you're going to love this video. I'm gonna show you things in pigments that you've likely never used before. This little jam I'm about to play for you was created entirely in pigments with no external effects and no Ableton automation. Let's check it out. Now, before I begin, I made a free sound bank that you can download with all these patches using the link above or down in the description. Now let's go ahead and break down how each one of these sounds were made in pigments. All right, sweet. So the first instrument we're gonna go over is the kick bass. This is becoming a more and more uh, prevalent tactic that folks are using where you combine the bass line and the kick drum into one instrument. It sounds like this. All right, we can hear clear notes coming out of this kick. So let's go ahead and build this thing up from scratch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new MIDI track in Ableton. I'll drag a Pigments into there. Go ahead and initialize that preset, brand new preset here. So the first thing of course is we're using a, we're using a sine waveform. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this is mono, right? So only one note plays at a time. Cool, so I wanna leave my envelope where it is because I want the note to hold out as long as I hold the note down, right? So, because remember we're making a kick and a bass. So maybe the next thing we'll do is we'll take the chorus frequency and we'll drop that down 24, right? So now it's really deep. I bet those of you without headphones can't even hear this note. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into the effects section of pigments and we're gonna say that the first effect slot is going to be a distortion. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to the tape curve. There's all these different saturation curves that you can choose from here in pigments. We're gonna choose tape and then we're gonna add some drive to it. Now we can actually hear the note that we're generating. Okay, so thus far, this just sounds like a distorted sine wave. It's not really got a kick drum aspect to it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize one of the other envelopes to make the pitch go up and down, right? To simulate the sound of a kick drum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pretty short decay envelope right here. And then we're gonna go back to the synth part. I'm gonna click on envelope two, cause that's the one that I'm messing with. This is what's so great about pigments. You just simply click on a sign and then all of a sudden, all of these different parameters, I can apply the envelope to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply that to the course frequency up here of engine one. So now we get. Now I don't know about you, but that sounds more like a kick drum. And because the envelope is quick, it's resting on the pitch that I want, thus making a kick drum bass line, right? Now this isn't very bright, so I'm gonna go over to the utility engine and I'm actually going to add some noise to this. So now when I play this. Cool, so that sounds pretty nice. Now the next thing that I wanna do though is I wanna add another noise layer, but this time let's go into the sample engine and I have to enable it, right? Let's go ahead and choose a noise sound, okay? Maybe we'll go with one of these. Maybe we'll just choose analog noise. now. So that's a different noise layer, but this time I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tune this up a bit and make it a little bit more high pass. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use this same envelope, envelope two, to take the volume in and out. So I'm turning the volume all the way down and then I'm taking envelope two and I'm adding it to this. The whole idea here is I'm trying to make a nice snappy beginning to this kick drum. Now take a listen. Bam. Now I could go into the utility engine actually and kind of turn the low pass filter down a little bit here. It just depends upon the kind of sound that I'm going for, right? Nice, okay. So now to complete the sound, let's go to the effects. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of EQing. So one, one thing that's really nice about pigments is that it has a parametric EQ built inside of it, right? So I could maybe uh, scoop some mids out to get this to be a little bit more um, kind of just low end and then top end, right? That sounds a little more modern. Now maybe the last thing I'll do is I'll reach for a multi-band, of course. Boom, let's tune it a bit. Sweet. So now we have a... Probably should turn the release up a bit. There we go. Nice, that is just a huge, giant kick drum sound, right? And the last thing I should say is that because decay is mapped to multiple parameters, by opening this, we can get different styles of kick drums. Right? 
Awesome. So that's that sound. Okay, so here's the next example, and this is this really awesome pad. Take a listen. Such a cool sound. So let's go ahead and build this one up from scratch. And this time we're gonna use the harmonic engine. This thing is really cool. This is essentially an additive synthesizer. So you're using a series of sine waves to construct a complex waveform. So right now it sounds really, really similar to just the classic saw wave, right? But we can do some really interesting things with this. One thing we can do is we can add a depth amount to these different harmonic removers. You could think of them as these are different shapes that are removing harmonics from this. And thus by removing, we get we're isolating more of those sine waveforms and we're creating different wave shapes that have really interesting sonic characteristics to it. And you can choose two different shapes. Let's go ahead and choose maybe a, a comb for the second one and you can morph between them. Another thing you can do is you can choose the parity between the even and odd harmonics. So there's a lot of sound design opportunity here for really cool pads, really interesting basses. There's also this section over here where you can interact with these partials in other ways. Partials are each one of the sine waveforms. Check this one out. I really like the windowing one. So we're emphasizing wherever the light gray is. Okay, so in order to make this sound, we're actually going to go over to this function generator here. Now, this function generator, I've used it to interact with the cutoff. What a function is, is essentially, it's like an envelope or like an LFO, except that you can draw it. It's sort of like drawing automation in a DAW, but it's contained inside of the pigments environment and it can react to different modulation sources inside of pigments. It probably will make a whole lot more sense if I just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, let's go ahead and apply this first function to the filter. So I'm gonna pull the filter all the way down, take function one and add it here. So we can see the filter cutoff is animated now based on the function. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow this down to a bar and I'm gonna start using this to draw. So what I'd like to do is create the rhythm that I had before, which went like this. And now I've got that rhythm made with this function. Cool, so we're getting somewhere. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna switch over to another function and show you something else. You can use this draw mode to kind of make a pretty wild one if you want. And then you can use this little dice right here to kind of randomize the positions of it, right? So let's do something like that, why not? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this to the morph mode. So we're gonna morph between these two different shapes. Now take a listen to this. As we morph between these different shapes, we can change the timbre of what we've got going on. Maybe we'll add this to a lot of different destinations. Let's add it to resonance. Okay, not very impressive thus far, but let's go ahead and go over to the effects section. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the shimmer reverb. This is a really pretty uh, thing that pigments can do. You can put a reverb anywhere inside of the effects chain. So let's take a listen to this. Really beautiful sound there, right? Now you can hear that the voice that we originally made is kind of getting washed out. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add another filter here. Let's go ahead and add a multi-filter and we're gonna take function two and we're gonna map it to that as well. Great, now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a multi-band to try to bring out some of the bright top end there. Awesome, so we're getting really close to the original, but I think the final thing and the most important thing to me is to make it so that it's not so rigid. Right now we have this really rigid function going on like cha-cha, cha-cha, right? So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna unmap all of these destinations with the function. And instead we're gonna use a really interesting feature called combinate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the lag mode. Now what this will do is this will actually add a lag or a slew to the, the signal coming from the function one. So I'm gonna choose function one as my source. Okay, so instead of using function one, now we're gonna go over to the combinate and use combinate one to add it to this filter, as well as the filter in the effects. So now check this out.
Now it sounds exactly the same as it did before, but if I take the amount up, check this out. Oh yeah. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what happens when we take the lag completely out and then we add it. So cool. So not only is lag kind of like smearing the sound, it's it's honestly adding a little bit of swagger, right? Because it's gonna be a little late, it's gonna be off the downbeat, and it really just adds a lot to this sound, right? Okay. So real quick, if you like my teaching style, I just wanna say that I've made an extremely robust and thorough online course for Arturia Pigments. There are over 30 videos and growing just like this on this amazing and unique sound design platform. Arturia Pigments has become my favorite software synthesizer, and as you can see from this video, it covers a lot of sonic territory. Now, Arturia was kind enough to offer a 50% discount on Pigments itself if you buy the course. And also, if you're watching the week that this video comes out, there's a nice little sale going on to sell Celebrate the launch. So if you want to check that out, of course, that's down in the description or up here. Anyway, let's get back to it. So this sound is pretty basic as it is. If you just play it through, it sounds like this. But check this out. You can turn on granular, and what this does is it essentially will make very small micro snippets of the sound that you can navigate, right? So you can have a lot of them being generated all at once, or you could have a little bit of them. Now, something that Pigments has done that's really, really unique is it's allowed you to actually sync these controls here to the clock of whatever you're doing. So in this case, we're going to choose to sync to the DAW, right? And now we have... It's only going to generate grains based on the clock division here. So we can do the same thing with size. We can say, okay, size, you have to be actually locked to a clock. So... Right? Now, the next thing to know is that each grain has an envelope shape to it. Right now we have a triangle, thus we get this wah, 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 right? Let's go ahead and switch this over maybe to smooth exponential. And if I turn the knob all the way down, take a listen. Right? I basically made myself some hats. So now what's cool is I could just navigate all these different um, noise samples and find ones that sound nice as hats. So maybe we'll try digital vinyl. That's kind of nice. Electro Firefly. And you can hear by moving the start where this grain starts, we get different tones. Let's keep trying different ones out. So a futuristic bullet impact, that's kind of fun. So now the next thing that I can do is I can modulate the start position and I can get kind of these, uh, these hi-hats that have life and have breath to them, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use LFO one, so we're gonna switch over to the LFOs. I'm gonna switch it to sample and hold mode. So I'm gonna use this sample and hold to change the start position. So maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll click on a sign and I'll move the start position around. And as you can see, it's starting to bump around and move around. But what I'd like to do is sync this to a clock. So let's say we'll sync it to a clock and maybe we'll do, uh, yeah, eighth notes. Now you can hear my hats are moving around, right? That's pretty sweet. So now in order to change the sound, we can actually change the envelope, right? We can change the size or the density. Now finally, what I would probably want to do is high pass this. So we'll use a high pass filter. Add a little bit of resonance to make a resonant hump where we want those hats to be dominant at. Bam. And now we have really creative and totally different sounding hats. Now we can really start to get this to be wild by changing the pitch. So what this does is this randomizes the pitch for each new grain. Take a listen to this now. We can hear that we're also moving up and down in the sample pitch. If you really want to get wild, you can do this. <laughs> so there's a lot to explore here with the granular engine. Awesome. Cool, so the next example is this bass sound. Take a listen. <laughs> Pretty grimy thing. Let's go ahead and build this up from scratch. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go to a new preset. Let's go ahead and make this mono. So you can choose how many voices you want to allocate. We're going to make this just mono right now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to drop the octaves down. Let's go ahead and make this down to 24 again. 
very, very deep sine wave bass. We're using the wavetable engine at the moment. Now, the next thing I want to show you is that something that's really unique to pigments is that it has a modulator oscillator that can be used with all these different really interesting ways of interacting with the waveform at audio rate. So one thing you can do is you can tune the modulator oscillator. And if you want to listen to what the modulator oscillator is doing, you can turn the volume of it up by itself. So let's go ahead and change the pitch. Right now it's on ratio mode. But it's better to not listen to the modulator oscillator and instead turn it all the way down and instead use these different mod sources to interact with the waveform. So one classic way is, of course, FM modulation or frequency modulation. So we could do frequency modulation, phase modulation. And all of these have different modes that you can use, right? Phase transform, we have pulse width, right? So yeah, using the modulator oscillator, this is the ratio of the modulation, right? So now that we have an octave up, when we use FM, we get this sound. Cool, and so to create a really classic FM bass sound, we're gonna add a little bit of frequency mod, and we're gonna open up the voices of the unison mode. And essentially what this will do is this will create more than one copy of this voice that we've created and then detune it against itself, and we get this sound. Now, leaving FM in a static position is never fun to listen to, right? Just this. But if you move it, it sounds really cool, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to yet again use Envelope 2 to move this around. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Decay and the Attack so that they're pretty similar in time. And we're going to click on Envelope 2 and we're going to assign this to the frequency mod. So now when I play this, we get... Right? Really nice sound there. So we'll come back to the synth page, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the effects page and start messing with this. I'm going to go switch this over to the distortion. And we can get some more harmonics there, as you can hear. The next thing I'll do is I'll bust out a multiband and kind of try to really get this to dig in. Cool, so we're getting a lot of interesting tones there, right? And now, when you go back to the synth, if you change the ratio here... There's kind of an endless palette of different tonal and harmonic uh, relationships that you can navigate and you can try different ones out until it works with your tune, right? But let's go ahead and do something else. I'm going to use actually envelope three here. Envelope one is, by the way, taking care of just how the voice works when I put a key down and when I pick it up. I want to leave this the way that it is because as long as my finger is down, I want that sustain stage to remain all the way up, right? But looking at envelope three, let's go ahead and open the decay a little bit. And I'm actually going to use this to navigate the wavetable. Take a listen to what happens when I navigate up through the uh, triangle and then into the saw. We can hear a really crazy, <laughs> a lot of brightness happen because we're adding brightness with both the distortion and the multiband here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of open this up as the voice goes through. Right? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use envelope three. Now, check this out. I'll click on envelope three down here and I'll assign it to this guy. But the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this in reverse because I want the position to be almost up to a, a saw waveform by the time I get up there. Take a listen. Now, you might think, wow, that last little bit of that wave is really annoying. It is. So we're going to go back to the effects and we're going to do something that I feel like is so powerful. And this is why Serum and Phase Plant and Omnisphere and all these other synthesizers are so powerful because you can actually do filtration in the effects or the multi-effects section of the synthesizer. And so this, you can do the same thing in pigments. We're actually gonna choose a filter, okay? So this is a just a classic low-pass filter that I have now. And we're gonna actually make the cutoff go down. So as we're adding harmonics, we're filtering downwards, and this is a really interesting effect, right? We can go both ways with it. Let's go ahead and use envelope three. And so first of all, we're gonna go up with it. So this kind of filters it downward, which could be the effect you're going for. Maybe you want to go the other way. Yeah. 
And so now you can hear we've got a bass that is got a lot of detail to it and it's just really fun to listen to and interact with, right? Cool. So this last voice is really interesting. You can actually see that we're not even using any of the oscillators at all. We're just using filters to generate the notes. Cool, so let's go ahead and build this one up from scratch. All right, so we're gonna initialize a preset here. Now check this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off both of the oscillators and we're gonna look at the filter. We're gonna switch the filter over to the mini Moog style filter right here because we can really crank this resonance. Now check this out. This filter actually self oscillates, but you have to give it something, okay? You have to give it some kind of signal, even if it's a tiny signal in order to get it to take off. Now you can hear that filter's taking off now, right? Okay, so essentially what we've done by pushing the resonance this high is we're making the filter have a feedback effect on itself, and it's called self-oscillation. So what's happening is, is we can actually take this filter and tune it to a note. So we'll leave it around right here, and the next thing I want to show you is that this little noise generator right here that is just barely turned up at all will definitely not make any sound of the filters off. Like, I can't hear that at all, right? But with the filter on and the resonance all the way up, we're adding energy to just this area right here, thus making a note. Right? So the next thing that we can do is we can actually turn the release up of the envelope VCA, which will make the noise decay slower, which will actually make the filter resonate longer so we can get longer notes. Right? Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make it so that this filter is following pitch. So we can actually use this keyboard tracking and turn this all the way up. Now take a listen. So this is how I designed that sound. This is not, of course, a normal sine waveform. It actually has a little bit more character than that. And because of that, we can really take advantage of this and make really interesting, really pretty sounding keys. So I'm not gonna break this down entirely. And of course you can pick these presets up and dissect it if you want, but essentially there are two filters that are self oscillating and the effect that they make is just so pretty. Love it. Cool, so obviously I love Arteria Pigments. It's an incredible platform for sound design. If you wanna check out the online course that I've made for Arteria Pigments, the link is up here or down in the description. As always, thanks for watching everybody, much love. I'll see you next time.